Hey everyone, so I'm gonna be uh, responding to uh, Hey Ruka's newest video on why ethnic diversity, and I'm probably gonna say ethical diversity, I keep making that mistake, um, but why ethnic diversity is terrible and makes people very unhappy. Um, and remarkably enough, I slightly disagree with both the um, conclusion to her analysis and the quality of her analysis uh, slightly. Now, what she's doing in the entire video basically is grabbing some statistics, wildly throwing them at you, and then quickly um, giving her own interpretation and hoping that something sticks and convinces you that indeed ethnic diversity is horrible. Now, the first thing I want to say is um, when you actually look at one of the things she links to, it's what is it, the Human uh, Development Index. Um, and she, she, she throws out there that look at these statistics and the very diverse countries are on the bottom and the very undiverse countries are on the top. Look at that. Um, in this thing she links to, the top 10. Now, first of all, go, she shows the top 10 and the bottom three. Uh, considering we have, what, a couple of hundred countries, statistically that is <laughs> beyond ridiculous an approach. I mean, these could easily be outliers for various reasons. Um, and even if they aren't, there are so many countries in between, it just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, um, let's just go with it. So the top 10 are Norway, which is not too diverse, Australia, where I live, very diverse nation of immigrants. Um, at this stage, something like 22% or something of Australians were born overseas, not even in the country. Um, Netherlands, again, not too diverse. The fourth is the United States, which she on her, I think she said it was 24th on whatever she was talking about. It's fourth, again, a very diverse country. Um, New Zealand, again, a very diverse country. Um, Canada, again, a very diverse country. Um, and then we get to Ireland, Liechtenstein, Germany, and Sweden that aren't too diverse. So amongst the top 10 here, we have Australia, United States, New Zealand, and Canada, which are basically immig immigrant countries which are very ethnically diverse. So in your top 10, you have four very diverse countries. And then she talks about the bottom, uh, the Congo, right? Um, Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, um, I think they call themselves now. And of course, when you look up uh, the diversity there, it is very ethnically diverse. It has 250 ethnic groups. But the thing about this is, really, what is an ethnic group? An ethnic group in Wikipedia here is a group of people whose members identify with each other through a common heritage, often consisting of a common language, a common culture, and or an ideology uh, that stresses common ancestry. Um, so... Uh, in the Congo, one of the examples of a place where there's a lot of ethnic diversity, there's certainly not a lot of racial diversity, which of course is what this is going to, right? Uh, these are all black Africans. They're genetically, racially very similar. Um, they are ethnically different. Um, that's because it's the Congo. It's, uh, there's a lot of jungle. There's a lot of, it's, it's a very poor country. People live in isolated communities. And so that's what fosters ethnic diversity there. Um, but it certainly has nothing to do with what she's pushing towards, which is that it's somehow mm, this difference between, between races. And I, I don't think she says that explicitly in the video, but we know that's what it's all about. Really what it tells us is that when you have very, very, very many radically different cultures and ways of looking at the world, that can kind of be challenging. And I have to agree with that. Um, that can be challenging, especially when it's 250 of them. Um, but it really tells us very little about um, diversity in smaller contexts and in countries that are not that fragmented. Now, another thing I want to bring up is she links to a paper, right? Um, and it's... Uh, so, sorry if I'm a bit slow because I'll have to look at the paper while I do this. So, it's the paper is E Pluribus Unum, Diversity and Community in the 21st Century the 2006 Johann Skite Price Lecture, okay? And uh, she, she basically says in that lecture, they're looking at um, diversity and when it's very diverse, people don't trust each other and they're very afraid and everything. Um, 
Now, when you look at the actual study, which is rather long, and I didn't read through the whole thing in any detail, but I didn't need to, um, because you will immediately get to the things that authors are talking about. So uh, they immediately talk about um, they immediately talk about the benefits of diversity. So they say that um, that uh, apologies. So they say that that uh, diversity immigration very much increases creativity, and they uh, reference a study that's shown that. They also talk about how immigration is generally associated with more rapid economic growth. Now look at that. That seems a strange thing to say for people that are suggesting that we should be uh, less r racially diverse. And of course, that's because that's not what the authors of the study are saying at all. They're not saying that we should be less uh, racially diverse. So when we go to the actual end of this of this journal article, um, where the becoming comfortable with diversity section. So that's a strange title. It almost seems like the authors did all of this research, looked at the information about how people can get kind of stressed out about being close to people with different ethnicities. Um, and then they, they say becoming comfortable with diversity. It's almost like the authors are suggesting that this isn't an insurmountable problem. So when we uh, look at it, then they have this this little part in there um, that uh, sorry again diversity itself can only be conceived in terms of socially constructed identities we saw earlier that when we were forced to define diversity in our research in terms of currently canonical for ethno racial categories in the United States centrist however how people are assigned by others to racial and ethnic categories has varied greatly over time and space. Thus, adapting over time, dynamically, to immigration and diversity requires the reconstruction of social identities, not merely of the immigrants themselves, through assimilation, uh, though assimilation is important, but also of the newly more diverse society as a whole, including the natively born. So the conclusion of this study, and you really can't look at the rest of the study without looking what the authors themselves, the people that did this research, thought you should learn from it, is that they're saying, well, we are going to have these conflicts. People are going to come in contact with people they don't understand. So we know that all of these ethnicities are really only a construct. So we have to make sure that we can actually bridge that gap and make society uh, have more cohesion. And we need to do that both by making the immigrants, um, the immigrants adapt to their host country more, but also by adapting ourselves more, including the people that were born in country, um, which of course is something that I entirely agree with. Um, but it's something that goes entirely against Heruka's point of diversity is bad we have to separate everyone out the point here is that diversity as they mentioned first has these amazing benefits more creativity more uh more growth for the economy um you know not not to mention the less tangible benefits the kind of cultural the new ideas culturally and all of those things we get not to mention the great food um but so they say these are the amazing things and it's inevitable so it's a good thing but we need to consider how to manage it because we know when people get into contact with people that are somehow alien to them and they say in the study that when people are far away people don't understand them that we need to manage that um, which is amazing because of course that's Heruka's great fear she wants to keep other people alien and not approach them in any way um, so this study essentially is talking about Heruka's fear and saying no no we have to we have to do something about it you're wrong ethnic diversity is great but we have to help people like you get over your horrible unfounded fears basically um, and I mean the last thing I want to say is to to ethnic diversity let's take the Congo as an example you know what I agree 
um, having 250 different groups that consider themselves different um, individual groups that want nothing to do with the greater whole, that's a bad thing. Yeah, it's true. That makes it very hard to do anything together. That makes it very likely to ha that there will be uh, intra-ethnic conflict because there are so many ethnicities out there who all consider themselves different and all well if they cooperate it's only to further the agenda of their own ethnicity but the point here is especially in the case of the Congo that really these aren't different people they're all the same um, the question is why uh, why aren't they kind of combining more into one ethnicity and if you look at any other country if you look at Germany a thousand years ago you can bet there were a bunch of different ethnic groups within Germany that were all uh, yet genetically very similar but they were ethnically different because back then distances were a lot bigger people didn't travel too far there were no modern telecommunications and Germany as a nation barely existed it was split up into all these little fiefdoms and kingdoms and little annoying bits so people did not develop a unified cultural identity so Germany was uh, ethnically diverse back then and it was a trouble and it was a trouble to some extent after Germany got unified as well um, and it was a problem in unifying Germany in the first place um, but that said the situation changed the situation changed over time and when Germany was unified there was already significantly less ethnic difference and today uh, generally the only ethnic differences that exists are between um, kind of like old school Germans and Germans that are more recent immigrants um, but the Germans that were there for a long time they've completely uh, integrated and the ethnic boundaries have disappeared and so that's what we need to do we need to make those ethnic boundaries disappear but what people like Heruka what the race separatists want to do and what also um, kind of the a lot of um, people that are on the right-wing kind of anarchist uh, side want to do is they want to split up the world they want to separate everything out and then they want to have people in small communities and they want to have the like-minded people all sitting together in one group in their little village or their little city and have their own everything and then those can interact with one another you know what that's gonna do that's gonna create new ethnicities each of those little communities will be its own little semi-ethnicity it'll be like hundreds of thousands of years ago lots and lots of ethnicities every village will almost be an ethnicity onto its own you know maybe it's a kind of couple of neighboring villages there'll be ethnicity everywhere there will be the potential for conflict everywhere that is the future that race realists and race separatists and uh and uh people who want to have the world be uh, split up into small communes that's the reality that they are moving us towards well I don't think they're moving us towards that because I don't think people will buy it but that's how how it would work out um, we would split up the world into lots of tiny groups that would develop their own ethnicities their own culture their own values their own belief systems and those would all be in conflict with one another we wouldn't get anything done anymore and probably we'd all of these communities would be fighting in various ways with one another um, because that's the way to form new ethnicities is by separating out things and instead like the authors of this paper um, propose we should in fact try to fight those ethnic boundaries we have the technological means we can communicate with one another it's gonna be a long process and there's gonna be a lot of conflict and the conflict isn't because suddenly there's these ooh, weird looking people coming into our countries the conflict is because through modern uh, infrastructure through modern transport through modern communications through modern media the world has gotten a lot smaller so now all of the ethnicities whether you like it or not we're all in the same boat we're all in the same place it's gonna be like that forever and just like in all of those other cases when that happens there's gonna be conflict at first the way to resolve it is to work on those boundaries and to slowly bring them down 
and to come together to a unified position where everyone can be happy. And that means that those people that are weird looking and dangerous coming in, they have to, they have to come closer, they have to adapt and we have to adapt. We all have to learn from each other. We all have to have respect for one another's ethnic background and culture. And then it'll happen by itself. Whereas if we separate out, you're blocking that from happening. You're encouraging the situation that exists in the Congo. You're wanting to spread that model to the entire world. Anyways, Church of SDFU. See you guys all later.